Hello everyone, this is uh, Tang Nguyen with uh, Aspen. Uh, I welcome you again to the second session of the uh, this year Aspen user group meeting. And uh, today we have another uh, uh, happy fairs, another uh, 90 minute session, and hopefully uh, uh, we will be very productive. Uh, the agenda today, we have uh, two presentations uh, and uh, uh, then a, uh, an open forum discussion. And uh, uh, this is uh, for those of you who haven't been there uh, two days before. Uh, this is uh, just like uh, um, uh, get you up to date is that you are not alone. There are a lot of other people who are using the same tools as you uh, and all, everywhere uh, uh, all over the world. And uh, if you need, uh, your company uh, needs uh, a personalized uh, training for Aspen, uh, we encourage you to contact uh, the uh, expert that will who work with, with, uh, with us uh, to do that and they are to, so to reply you, to you right away. Okay, so our presentation today is by uh, Salman Andalini and Xinyang Dong. They will be talking about uh, the application that they've made for Aspen uh, uh, OLX API. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Aladini. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Aspen for giving us this half an hour to talk about uh, some of the exciting applications that uh, we've been working on with uh, various utilities in North America uh, by utilizing the latest and greatest Aspen OLX API. Uh, these are applications with regards to protection modeling as well as protection analysis. As you all know, uh, almost everyone has been impa impacted by one way or another by COVID-19. Uh, I do want to appreciate Aspen for not canceling their user group meeting and finding a way to uh, have this WebEx sem uh, seminar uh, remotely for everyone to join. Uh, so please and stay connected. I won't bore you guys with uh, reading out our bios. Ultimately, myself, I'm Sam Aladini, my colleague Sing Yang Dong. And uh, what we've been working on in the past decade is uh, looking at protection engineering automation, kind of scripting and uh, preparing customized software to integrate various data sources and software platforms for utilities and making them more efficient uh, on their day-to-day -day activities. The agenda for today, uh, I'll be going through a little bit of uh, protection challenges of utilities these days and how the need for automation can uh, help reduce some of those risks with the challenges that we encounter today. And uh, next, I'll be talking about a little bit of data management and the challenges that goes with that, which is a prerequisite for any type of automation or software activities. And uh, at that stage, my colleague saying will kind of take over and go through some uh, very mature use cases of utilizing uh, the API uh, and we have four examples for you today. One is an automated modeling of all the relay settings from uh, your different repositories, such as Aspen or DB or PowerBase, and reading all the native setting files into Aspen. Uh, PRC27 implementation, uh, an automated fault location, uh, looking at kind of live data that's retrieved from the field, and using Aspen to identify uh, the fault location and some primary model validation and updates uh, that you can utilize different sources such as GIS or asset repositories. And we'll end by uh, our vision for next steps of uh, Aspen API. Uh, we have some ideas of how we can try to uh, improve it long-term uh, to increase the number of these use cases uh, for the industry.
in terms of some of the challenges that we are all facing today at a utility. As you know, there are different large drivers such as capital projects, compliance requirements, and new technologies. Uh, there's increased workload for most of the protection engineers today. Uh, I think the power industry in general, but especially in the protection, uh, we are losing a lot of great uh, expertise into retirement. And there's a lot of lack of adequate staff when it comes to uh, finishing all these uh, capital projects with uh, strict deadlines and commissioning. In addition to that, we've seen a great increase in terms of PRC and SIP compliance requirements in the past decade, uh, which inherently uh, increases the data management requirements as well as model validation requirements. To make things even more difficult, all of these new technologies, the DERs, uh, anti-islanding, islanding, uh, microgrids, uh, and uh, lower fault values in the transmission system has been introduced at, a, at an accelerated pace and protection engineers need to keep up with that. And it's make, uh, made our lives very difficult to be able to validate the settings across the entire system when it's always changing. I wanted to very briefly highlight, uh, let's say, a process that a protection engineer may see today at a utility. Uh, this isn't, of course, uh, the same for uh, every uh, client as well, that it's just a, a high-level overview. Uh, but you can see that, in general, there's a, a loss of efforts in terms of maintaining a, a network model, coordinating with ISOs and neighboring utilities, to create a, a short circuit model that's needed for Aspen. At the same time, you also need to find a way to model your protection using asset repositories and the native setting files to, to have a comprehensive Aspen one-liner model. And this allows protection engineers to use their philosophies and their different setting templates to actually come up with setting changes and create the electronic native setting files, which will be issued to the field through asset repositories and you have challenges of NERC compliance as well which will probably utilize all these different data sources so from that perspective i wanted to just highlight that you could see programs such as uh, one liner and aspen rdb are really in the thick in the middle of all the these different activities that the protection engineer may do on a day-to-day -day activity and therefore there's a great need for additional automation and the API to uh, reduce some of these efforts. In terms of need for automation, I won't go through these, uh, this slide into too, too much detail, but in, uh, in principle, you can really uh, utilize different macros and scripts and be able to automate extensive uh, efforts to maintain the quality, so it reduces the human error, as well as meeting aggressive uh, deadlines and schedule. We generally, uh, as an industry, focus on automating studies. I think everyone is very familiar with that, being able to enforce different rules on how you set your uh, relays and protection functions, distance and overcurrent, as well as automating thousands of fault scenarios and assessing the, the health of your protection system. However, uh, automation doesn't need to stop there for just studies. You actually can automate a lot of the data entry and the model validation uh, and reduce the manual effort as much as possible, uh, being able to uh, align different data sources, your asset repositories, your GIS networks, and uh, be able to calculate the line impedances and make sure that you have uh, a holistic check on your model uh, deficiencies. You can also automate the processing of all these studies that we can run in Aspen and be able to organize and condense the information where the focus of the protection engineers would be on uh, the areas of the issues rather than actually spending hours to find out what the issue is. We prefer to have them resolve the issues and come up with mitigation plans. And as the industry is moving towards more automation, there's going to be many different reporting requirements, and you uh, can automate that as well and deliver large amount of data and study results and mitigation plans 
to different stakeholders. Some of the uh, high, high level categories of what uh, you can automate when it comes to protection engineering, uh, as you can see, is uh, by compliance, loss of different PRC standards 23, 25, 26, 27. Uh, SIP requirements in terms of ports and services and firmwares, so SIP 6, SIP 10. Uh, if you're looking at distribution, some OSHA arc flash requirements and uh, PPE uh, safety uh, calculations can be fairly automated throughout your system. Uh, data management and processes, these are providing the data for operations and a kind of a, a live system looking at how you can integrate uh, relay settings and provide it for integrated capacity assessment, as an example, uh, or adaptive protection, things that operations will actually need to know uh, the, the settings for uh, every relay in a live basis. Reporting, protection engineers gets, uh, get uh, quite overloaded with reporting requirements from other departments. This could be uh, examples CT ratios for all your system under relays for calculating uh, let's say FAC 008 uh, for planners or compliance or providing minimum trip or specific functionalities enabled uh, in relays for operations. Analysis I think most of you are quite familiar on and there's lots of available uh, tools that Aspen presented on Tuesday and will be presenting today terms of calculating SIRs, looking at coordination or sensitivity of your settings, uh, fault locations, impacts of DERs, you name it. And modeling, as I mentioned, you could be able to update some of the nameplate information automatically from other sources, your, your network and primary model, as well as protection model uh, into Aspen One Liner. Generally, what we always recommend is to not necessarily add complexity of automating one project or one task at a time, but taking a more of a holistic approach. And uh, the intention is to make sure that we can have the protection engineers interface with only a few applications at a time. And at the back end, integrate the different data sources and automate the data retrieval and analysis of the data uh, for the protection engineers. So you can, as you can see in this chart, uh, we would like to have different setting repositories, different live measurements from Pi Historian or SCADA, NMS models, uh, looking at uh, different uh, planners and the asset repository models and utilize uh, simulation platforms such as Aspen One Liner, all in the same application and be able to apply the utility philosophies and the reporting requirements uh, into the same platform. Uh, we are all protection engineers. We know protection is an art and impossible to fully automate, nor should we. We always want to make sure that the engineer has full control. So some design concepts to keep in mind is that this interface needs to be simple and user friendly. But more importantly, it needs to be transparent to the engineer and allows them to actually reduce their burden of data entry and can always override some of the logic or algorithms and intervene uh, when need to be. And the design of this holistic approach needs to be modular enough that over time you can plug and play and integrate new uh, or uh, modify data sources and different simulation platforms. When it comes to uh, managing data, I wanted to uh, kind of just put in some seeds in terms of how uh, critical data management is when it comes to uh, automation and software and scripting. So in general, uh, we want to have different uh, objectives such as standardizing the attribute data, but we're not talking just at a protection and control realm. We're talking company-wide at a utility be able to standardize names such as substations or device IDs and uh, equipment names, so on and so forth, come up with different acronyms that uh, can help with the limitation of different software character limitations 
and you would be using this standardized attribute data company-wide, whether it's planning, operations, or engineering. You also want to uh, be able to improve the process and uh, integrate key applications by the help of automation. And this is connecting different data sources. And this allows you to have compliance evidence and traceability and improve produ productivity. Uh, so in general, there is no such thing as one database that a utility company-wide, everyone would be uh, entering the data into one source. And you need to strive towards achieving what I call a single source of data by highly uh, standardizing and connecting and integrating these different databases company-wide. And that allows uh, protection engineers to take advantage of data coming from other departments. You also need to find ways to uh, program and generalize vendor as well as your internal conventions. So even a non-protection engineer could understand uh, what is the setting of a, a zone two distance element, regardless of which vendor uh, you're using or whether or not you have a microprocessor relay or electromechanical. In essence, what we want to strive towards is, as you can see, find an autonomous way to connect your main asset management repository into setting repositories such as Aspen RDB and PowerBase here, as well as find a way to have this information, all the relay settings automatically get pushed down to your short circuit model, which is Aspen one-liner. And this model needs to also be aligned with your planning uh, system planning model as well, the different programs such as PSSC or PSLF when it comes to uh, transmission uh, or GIS and uh, Simon's energy when it comes to distribution. And ultimately, as you can see now, this allows studies to be organized and standardized by using different inputs from the relay repository, Aspen RDB, uh, testing results or any analysis that comes out of uh, Aspen OneLiner. Although there are many challenges here, uh, so you, I, I want to scare you guys a little bit that automation is not just flipping a switch and everything is automated. Uh, the benefits of creating such a comprehensive program may not be immediately observed and it's something that uh, you need to uh, make a business plan for and understand the risk and the payback that goes with it. And the benefits are highly dependent on the data quality. And so from that perspective, you really do need to pay attention on how you structure your data and putting enough controls on it. Uh, to make things more complicated, it's hard enough to find uh, good protection power system new grad engineers, but now you need to have them trained uh, with an automated mindset as well and understand uh, programming. And there's always a one-time activity for most utilities in terms of consolidating all the different data sources, organizing it, digitizing it, and coming up with these process uh, standardization and naming convention. So I know I, I spoke at a very high level. Uh, in principle, you can argue that any application you can think of can be automated. Some of them may not be worth the effort. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, I'm now going to hand it off to my uh, peer, Sein Young, who is actually going to go through some real life examples with utilities on this idea of what we call engineering automation. Sein Young, are you on? Yes, I am. Thank you, Sam. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sein Young Dong from Quanta Technology. Um, today, I will be talking about uh, the four use cases that. Um, um, in the applications and effort we developed uh, utilizing Aspen uh, OneLiner API. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, the first one is um, to address the challenges in protection modeling. Um, as Sam mentioned, um, it's kind of difficult to maintain a study-ready protection model. Uh, there are um, some challenges that's, that are commonly seen uh, among utilities, like it's kind of labor-intensive. Uh, manual pr process to create the protection models in the short circuit model, um, and it's easy to make human errors, and there are different status of settings that you may want to be pushed in the model at different stage. Um, so we have this um, 
automated um, solution called ADI, Automatic Data Import, that allows you to connect to your um, relay repository and automatically push the settings and create the models in short circuit models, such as uh, OneLiner. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So the manual effort of modeling all the protections on a transmission line can take about one or two hours. So you, you need to first extract the setting from your setting repositories. Sometimes if you have multiple packages, you may want to extract all of them or, or part of them, uh, depending on the case. And you need to create the models. Um, if it's um, a teleprotection model, then it's highly manually processed. And you need to import the settings. And also, you would like to uh, normally test your settings by applying a few faults and see if the signal only and, and tripping elements are correctly set. So um, that, that can be the hassle of manual process. Um, with ADI solution, um, it, which connects to the um, relay repositories, uh, such as SBAN, RDBs, or other vendors, or um, even folder structures, it will automatically grab the data for you, um, pass the setting files, analyze the trip mask, and uh, identify all the protection elements that need to be modeled uh, as tripping and same as um, um, signal only. Um, and right now, the ADI uh, is compatible with um, uh, various vendors, uh, different file formats, um, such as RDBs, MDBs, URS, uh, or some EM relay templates, smart PDF. Um, it's basically over 100 relay models. And we can model all kinds of different um, protection relays in, in one line or other vendors. So of course, this um, process um, is um, uh, depending on the ORR X API functions, and um, it can successfully reduce the effort to a few minutes to model per uh, transmission line. Next slide, please. So that's uh, about the protection modeling um, use case. And another one is PR697. Uh, this is a compliance that uh, is coming up later in the year, and uh, every utility need to decide uh, what to do with it. Um, there are quite some challenges with this new compliance. Um, one of the most significant one is uh, requires a lot of simulation and fault studies, which will definitely generate a massive amount of data especially if you choose to do a system-wide uh, coordination study. So um, the solution we have are um, basically a uh, automated tool that uh, connects to the simulation software, which um, help you to uh, apply your simulations automatically, uh, generate the reports, um, highlights the issues that engineers need to review um, and integrate some of the protection guidelines that uh, varies uh, by each utility. And finally, generate some compliance-ready reports. Next slide, please. So um, this slide is about the two options of PRC27. I wouldn't go into details. Uh, option one is basically system-wide. You study everything BS in your system and uh, come up with report. Option two is um, you um, create and maintain uh, baseline fault levels that uh, will limit your scope to only the lines of BS equipment um, with a larger change than, 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 your, than your baseline. Uh, but it creates more issues in trackings and um, a strict um, process need to be followed. And um, yeah, that's it. Next slide, please. So a third use case that utilize the, uh, oh, sorry, Sam, can you go, go back one slide? Just want to mention, uh, this is a un undergoing uh, project. We are actively developing um, the coordination study utilizing the API function, uh, which, uh, which does the step event analysis for you. So, um, and we will probably have a comprehensive solution uh, later this year. Uh, next slide, please. So a third use case that uh, we had um, with uh, one of our customers were uh, automated fault location solution. So the challenges at the utilities are 
Um, normally, when a fault happens, you want immediate response. Um, but when an engineer is notified there is a fault, they oftentimes need to pull the fault record remotely, and same as the exciting files. And um, they oftentimes only have time to um, apply one fault algorithm uh, that gives you one result that in some cases may not be the best algorithm to apply on the scenario. Um, and also the results is mostly ohms on miles, not on map. So our solution is to get the process uh, because the data pooling for location calculation and response sending uh, can all be automated. And uh, with this uh, fault location program, we applied multiple fault location algorithms that um, not only reactants, but sometimes Takagi or um, Novazel like double-ended fault locations and also has an expert system that provides the, the best guess among all the algorithms. And since the program is uh, connected to a GIS data source, it can automatically draw the fault on the map for you. As you can see, the screenshot on the right, um, the bottom circle has the largest, uh, is the largest, and uh, a circle goes a little smaller to the top. It just means it's more um, possible to happen near that uh, tower location. Next slide, please. So this is just a holistic view of um, how the entire process is automated. But as you can see in the center, the expert system um, is connected to the s one liner. And uh, once it does all the internal fault calculations, it calls uh, one liner API functions to uh, simulate the fault and compare the fault currents and voltages uh, with what's calculated within the expert system to further validate the results. Next slide, please. So this is um, a screenshot on the left is a screenshot of the proof of concept uh, for location program. As you can see, it takes the contract uh, fault records, draws the curves on, on the screen, gives you all the measurements, uh, detects the fault types, and then come up with um, some kind of um, uh, fault impedance calculation and, and mileage, if that mileage is existing in one liner. Um, and on the right is just um, how the program calls uh, the API functions is through Python. Uh, next slide, please. So the last use case is um, automated model validation and update. Um, this was a different uh, project, but uh, it was in mainly uh, in support of the fault location program because um, uh, the clients um, realized how uh, accurate the model needs to be once we want to uh, automate um, a lot of the process. So as you can see the, the screenshot on the right, um, for this line substation P to substation C, there are a bunch of issues that can potentially cause troubles for what kind of studies um, you're trying to do. For example, there are five TAP buses along the line, but none of them are correctly marked as TAP bus uh, because there should be a small T under it if it's TAP bus. Uh, so even to one liner, this is six lines. Um, and also another issue would be um, the line length is zero miles for one of the line sections. Uh, it's empty line names and empty circuit IDs. So this can also cause trouble of identifying which line we're talking about when you try to uh, find the line and apply fault. And manual fix for the entire system is, uh, to be honest, pretty difficult um, and time consuming because all these uh, different issues can be scattered in, in different places in the system. Um, next slide, please. So the solution here is um, um, we connect it to a GIS data data source and uh, compare what we get in the one liner short circuit model using API, um, generate a mapping file um, uh, in Excel, and then later the same tool would use that mapping file to uh, batch update the bus and line sections in the one liner model. The reason of having that map file was uh, because um, um, so to give engineer um, control of what's being updated in the primary model. Um, so before you update your, your, your source circuit model, you can actually open that file to edit the lines that you want, update to you know, delete lines or add more lines or, or buses. 
although this um, can be a one-time effort of cleaning the model, it can also be used to maintain the model going forward if there's any uh, changes to the primary system, such as out of new lines or uh, retermined lines. So I think that's that for all the use cases. And these are some selected publications for the use cases we mentioned. Um, so feel free to reach out to me or Sam for, for these papers. They should be available online, but if you can't find it, um, please contact us. So, okay, I'll, there are only two slides left. I'll wrap up soon. So next steps are from a API in Qantas region. I guess um, we've been working very closely with Aspen, uh, especially with Tan on troubleshooting the beta API functionalities to prepare for the release. Um, and we will continue to do so. Um, and we also want to share our visions for some potential new API functions and capabilities that we believe can truly benefit uh, the industry. So for example, this one is a related to the step event analysis. Um, if you haven't used this functionality in OneLander before, the top part of the screenshot is what we have today. Uh, so if you apply a fault, it will get generate a string formatted report, and but it's relay group level. Um, it will tell you on this relay group, uh, this OC ground relay, OC5351 operated. Uh, but in our vision that we hope in the future, we can have a more detailed element level report. So I come up with um, this, um, uh, make up with this case where there are some issues that with a relay group level reporting that will be hidden in the report and not be identified. Um, so for example, if we're reporting every element in that, every relay in that relay group, then would then would then we would know that the LOC operated at immediately, like in, in, in the event above, but the TOC does not operate, which means pickup is set too high. It can't even see a closing fault. Or another case can be a zone two, uh, element timer is set to too short, so it operates right after uh, zero second at the end. Um, and uh, with relay level element, uh, re relay level uh, report, we wouldn't be able to see this. So next slide. Another vision we have is to add more default options for the same step event analysis, because there will be this will be the core uh, functionality that's being used in wire coordination study. Um, so for example, with an open or with outages, as you can see right now, uh, these options are available in the classic fault, fault uh, window, but it's not available in the step event uh, window. Um, but uh, we were actually asked by some of our clients um, to do that type of simulation, sequential event simulation uh, with land open or with outages. Uh, now these are still doable um, outside of the step event analysis, for example, if you alter that line section entirely or temporarily insert a tab bus that's really close to the line terminal and only alter that line section, uh, or you alter that uh, equipment and then apply the fault study, it's still doable. It's just, um, we believe it's really beneficial and commonly used that once the options are added, it can really benefit the industry. Uh, the last one is just to call over current really coordination window without opening one liner. Um, Something we think with OneLiner's uh, relay library, this can be uh, doable and really benefit to show a coordinated results. Thank you, Seng Yang. Uh, I guess we've run out of time, so I'll just try to combine all the questions I see uh, uh, online uh, together and respond. There's been a lot of questions with regards to GIS integration with Aspen OneLiner. Yes, a live or a direct connection is possible with the help of the API function in one liner and GIS is generally a database. Uh, we would work with uh, clients and their uh, processes and naming convention in both GIS and how they model uh, their network in Aspen one liner and the two can be fully connected. And there's been a few questions with regards to what softwares uh, actually can help keep track of network model. Uh, generally uh, these days th those are homegrown databases uh, for every utility because how they manage their network data is quite scarce and different. It hasn't been standardized uh, industry-wide. However, there's a lot of initiatives and movements in terms of 
uh, moving the entire network data management as part of your overall asset uh, databases and asset management systems. And it's kind of called nodal uh, network modeling, NNM. And that's something that more the larger utilities are moving towards and uh, decommissioning their homegrown databases to keep track of transformer test reports, uh, line impedances, mutual coupling, you name it. On that note, uh, thank you all. And I uh, apologize, we went a few minutes over. Feel free to reach out to Sang and I if you have any questions. Uh, we'll remain online for the rest of the uh, user group, and we would be happy to answer any of your questions in the last half an hour session. Uh, Tan, we are done. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is uh, Tang Wen again, and uh, I really appreciate uh, Wanda, uh, Sam, and Senior uh, about the great, uh, very uh, comprehensive uh, presentation, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, especially uh, uh, we value your uh, uh, suggestions uh, for the OLX API, and that's exactly what we would like to uh, hear from you guys. Uh, our uh, and collaborator, developers, and users. So that's how we make uh, the tool better. We don't want, we know that we cannot do everything and uh, uh, we need to know exactly what's the uh, priority and also what's the, uh, 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 whether or not uh, there's some, somebody else to do something that's better than, or more uh, better than us, okay? So next, uh, I will, uh, according to the agenda, uh, I will, uh, do a quick presentation on uh, this topic here. Uh, this is called one-liner tool for PRC26 calculation. Okay. Uh, I will go very uh, quickly through the uh, some overview of the PRC26 calculation. It's not meant to be a PRC26 presentation per se. We just we meant to uh, help you be able to get started using the capability of the one-liner software to do that kind of calculation, okay? Um, so first, uh, the PRC26, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, gist of this standard, which is now being enforced, is you are the owner or the operator of the bulk electric system component transmission line uh, generator or a transformer. If you are, then you are required to prove that your protection will not trip those elements during stable power swing. So that's the gist of it. Okay? And there are four requirements. Uh, what we will focus in this um, talk today is R2, how you evaluate the load responsive relay that you have in your one-liner model already to see if they will meet this uh, PRC26 criteria, okay? So this is the key word uh, here, they, to meet the requirement of PRC26 because uh, uh, this is, the, I, I think in my opinion, is differently from exactly a, um, a, a detailed study of the uh, uh, transient and stability. So all you need to do is to show the uh, auditor basically when they, they come that you have met the criteria in the standard. So that's uh, the Aspen tool has something for you to use for that, okay? Uh, so before I go further, uh, this uh, just to, for those of you who are not really familiar with this topic, power swing, this is a definition I copy from the standard. I'm not going to read it again, but I'll give you a couple of seconds to read it. and. Uh, uh, the second is the uh, uh, the second bullet here is uh, of course the uh, power swing when it happened in the system it can die down by itself or it can skip uh, multiply uh, amplify so the second class is one that that's uh, a little bit worried about okay uh, that you do need to trip but then if this somehow this is a uh, stable is going to die by itself then you do will not trip on that, otherwise you'll be trouble, okay? Okay, uh, the uh, the way the PRC standard uh, uh, 
allowed you to prove that you are uh, not tripping on a stable power swing is they let you uh, show that your relay is not tripping in a certain region. Okay, so here in this picture, uh, we have uh, on the top left, we have a, uh, a representation of the transmission line with the Z sub L. And on the left, there's a sending source. And on the right, there's a rece uh, receiving source. And in general, in parallel with the transmission line, you always have a uh, a system be, uh, around it. So that's uh, represented by ZTR, okay? So when you have a uh, swing, that means the source on the left and on the right are moving at a different speed and then they, uh, they uh, oscillate. So with that, you have a lot of currents flowing from one end to the other and back. And also that would cause the voltage at the uh, measurement at the R of the line will uh, 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 the voltage will fluctuate and the current will fluctuate. And if you take the voltage divided by the current, you see the apparent impedance. And then the, that is how the distance phase relay, distance relay on the line uh, will uh, uh, detect that. And if you plot that on an Rx diagram, which is lower left corner with the horizontal axis, is R and vertical axis in the X. If you take the voltage divided by the current, there will be a point on this graph, okay? And PRC 26 define this uh, dumbbell circle, two circle, and, uh, and on the right-hand side is magnified. You see this, uh, the uh, uh, circle is a part of circle and also a part of those uh, lens. So they, there's a very detailed um, derivation of how those things works, but uh, in very uh, short way, your relay trip setting should not be encroaching outside of this uh, of this uh, dumbbell shape thing. Okay, it's it's okay if it's inside because when uh, the apparent impedance uh, appear inside this dumbbell shape, that is the per PRC26, again, I emphasize again, according to PRC26, that's the unstable power swing. You have to, you can and you have to trip. But if it's outside of this shape, your relay should not be tripping. So that's why your trip region, the trip characteristics of your relay should not be encroaching outside of this shape, okay? So that's the whole, um, the, the whole idea. And Aspen Onliner uh, is well equipped to uh, for you to make this calculation and to do this plot. Uh, what we have of course in Aspen Onliner is not this simplified uh, system that we have on the left uh, upper left corner. What we have is uh, always, as you know, a thousand, ten thousand of buses and the line and the relays and so on. So. Uh, that's good because uh, uh, we have the very detailed um, model of the system and one liner is well equipped to reduce that whole system to just a transmission line with the two source and the transfer impedance. Uh, let me see if I can uh, uh, bring up my pointer. Okay, I think it's still visible here. Okay, so the uh, one liner will, if you have the line already there and the relay on the line, it will help you to show this graph and make the corresponding calculation, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the way to do that is you first have to show the uh, distant relay or over current relay windows. And then under the add menu, it's just so you say, see there, go ahead and add unstable power swing reason. And the dialog box on the left will appear. So the, relay, the, pro, the program knows that the relay is on the line, okay? And it will automatically reduce the, line, uh, the system to those uh, two source at the line. So the, I think I have uh, a picture on the upper right corner to show that line. So the relay I am showing is as Fieldale on the line to Ohio and further to Nevada. So when you click on that line, the relay is uh, uh, protecting that line. 
And the program will now know that you uh, are plotting the PRC26 region of UPSR for the line. And it, it, I think it's smart enough to ignore the tab. So the, line, the whole line going to Nevada, you see that T under, under this Ohio, that's a tab. Okay, so uh, the, uh, on the dialog box, you say, now I'm plotting it for a line between Philly and Nevada. But I purposely choose this example to show you that if you have a generator on locally, uh, PRC also have a separate set of calculation, a similar but not, not always the same calculation for the generator protection. And if you know that this relay is supposed to be protecting the uh, generator, if you know that this line on the left here going up to the left is uh, nothing, it's just a station services, then uh, uh, if this relay is the generator relay, you should uh, select the generator option on the dialog box. The result will be slightly different looking. It will be the same, but uh, if you want to uh, less question from the auditor, make sure that you select the correct. Uh, okay, so for the line protection relay, select the line. Uh, the for generator uh, protection, select a generator, sorry. Uh, then automatically when you click OK, this uh, dumbbell shape will appear uh, for the distant relay. And also there's uh, a, a threshold would appear on the uh, overground current, uh, no, uh, uh, over um, uh, current relays and dialog uh, uh, windows to show you where the Tripping should not and should not be. So on the over uh, current wind uh, relay, this uh, the trip should not be within that uh, section. Okay, and again, and also the uh, the horizontal line in the over current uh, window to show that this is a 15 cycle time mark. That means uh, PRC uh, let you trip is uh, with a delay, but not instantaneously. So on the both picture that I'm showing here, your relay will pass, okay? Uh, because on the left, the tripping of zone one is not encroaching, that's uh, dumbbell shape, dumbbell shape. And uh, tripping on zone uh, uh, for the instantaneous, for the, in, uh, for the overcurrent is not encroaching on that uh, threshold, okay? Let's see, uh, let me move further. Now, uh, one liner also let you do one step further than that. Uh, in the previous uh, method, you have to open one relay at a time and do those uh, clicking and then do the, the printing, okay? Uh, you can also, in the latest version of OneLiner 14.8, uh, you have the menu command in the um, uh, main windows. Let's say check relay performance during stable swing, and it will bring up this dialog box. You can select to check the relay in one group or in entire system. And but normally, as you know, the uh, uh, PRC 26 uh, requirements is not uh, uh, applied to all the relay uh, in the system. So usually you want to mark those relay that you want to uh, uh, check with some tag and then check only those relays. And what you will get is the report on the right hand side, looks like similar on the right hand side. Uh, it has a graphic, it has the source impedances, you have, it has the ha highlight section, which is not, I, I don't think it's not, uh, it is uh, called for by, uh, by PRC, but uh, it's much better. Okay, I'll show you that. Uh, that uh, result on the uh, right-hand side in yellow, let's say, if you, uh, if you can read it now, it will say cheap, during stable swing or not? Some say yes, some say no. The first one say yes, and obviously the graphic bear on bear that out. And this one, another relay say no, and then the graphic also bear that out. Uh, what happened is that the program uh, had used a simulation-based approach 
to come up with a yes no answer and uh, uh, basically uh, it would reduce this whole system to uh, the entire uh, and, uh, uh, to just two buses and it will play out that swing according to area so that you have this uh, shape bell, dumbbell shape and on each point of that uh, scenario the program will uh, apply the relay simulation to that voltage and current that is observed at this point and it will report a path it at none of those points and a relay would trip. So because all this uh, shape, a closed shape, and also the characteristics of it's also closed shape, if it's not tripping on any point, that will mean that the uh, characteristics is uh, within the, uh, 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 the region and you are, you are okay, okay? So that's the approach. And uh, uh, make sure you try that out, that report, okay? So next, uh, I want to uh, go uh, and mention a few uh, item that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, an uh, uh, engineer from uh, uh, National Grid, uh, have, uh, who had uh, done the, the actual uh, PRC26 uh, work on their system. And then we have a summary of that uh, work presented at uh, last year WPRC. Okay, so that will, the paper uh, will uh, is uh, available from uh, WPRC. I just highlight a few key findings that we have found, okay? Uh, but be before I go further, uh, I, this is uh, the disclaimer that I must, and I, we won't always say, we are the, a tool maker. We read our the PRC ourselves and uh, try to understand, but that's it, our it, interpretation, okay? Uh, so uh, always read this uh, PRC text and uh, interpret it. And if you agree with us, go ahead, uh, use our Aspen tool. And if you are not, then you have to make the decision on your own, okay? So that uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, a few uh, finding that we uh, found uh, when uh, when uh, uh, we work with uh, uh, John uh, from National Grid uh, and summarize, summarize here. Okay, first, uh, when you run the P uh, network, the uh, PRC26, as you uh, know, uh, there has to be a network reduction done. And if your network model is not uh, up to date or has an anomaly, you are not going to get a good result, okay? Uh, secondly, uh, because of the fact that you have to uh, uh, get the correct uh, remote end of the line uh, to build the uh, setting and receiving end uh, of the uh, equivalent model. Uh, you have to pay attention on uh, whether the tap line or this is a three transmission, a three terminal transmission line. Okay, so let me show you with an example here uh, that uh, so if you uh, that uh, so if you uh, make sure and the real end of the line here, make sure this uh, tab pass is marked, okay? And also make sure that the uh, line name uh, to match uh, uh, if you have something else going out of this bus. So that's a line the program knows to where that uh, remote end is. Now, on the other hand, if you have a three terminal line like this one, and you want to evaluate this relay, make sure that this is marked as a half bus of three terminal line. Because uh, as per uh, PRC 26, evaluation of the three terminal line is a two step process. You have to uh, reduce the system to uh, three bus. And then you reduce further to just this section, okay? So if you did not mark the uh, tab bus of three terminal line, plot this, uh, let me move back. Can you plot this graph? If your relay is not at the transmission line KV level. Uh, uh, you will uh, I have to uh, make sure that uh, the uh, RX diagram, which is uh, uh, representing the relay has to be adjusted to, so that it cover the 
the line at the KV level. And Aspen one-liner will do that automatically for you, OK? Uh, uh, not the circle. And then you can see that uh, if you look at just the circle, it may encroaching on the dumbbell shape. But if you have the uh, POTT, so the tripping uh, region will be inside that. So you are OK. okay? And uh, the one on the right uh, is the case when you take in, if you take into account the DUTT direct transfer uh, trip. So you're not only looking at the local relay, you're looking also at the remote relay as well. And the remote relay is encroaching. So you are not, you are not OK here with the DUATT. Even if you have plot, I, I don't think John didn't plot the uh, local relay. So assuming that the local relay at this end uh, is the uh, 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 it's not encroaching, but the uh, remote end, you have to look at that as well. Okay, so those are just a few do and don't. And uh, uh, I guess uh, that should be uh, all of my material here. Uh, let's see, uh, there's a few questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, are there any other use for three terminal line? Uh, well, I guess uh, uh, this. Uh, Three terminal line tablets also has an impact on the coordination checking, the relay coordination checking that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we we may have time to touch on upon today. And I think there's an also a question that I saw earlier on uh, uh, some kind of the uh, PRC twenty six. I saw something about the uh, uh, change in this, uh, uh, whether or not this dumbbell shape is uh, an accurate uh, criteria, uh, uh, or whether the change in the stability uh, study will need to be uh, 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 we need to be uh, performed according to PRC twenty six standard that we said. I think if you are. Uh, uh, if you can do the dumbbell shape, uh, you are okay. You are in compliance. But uh, if you uh, are in encroaching on it, and you can run the uh, transient stability stability uh, study to uh, prove that it's still okay, then you're still okay. Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, my time's up, and I think that is all this uh, um, material I have. Let's uh, just now. Move to the next uh, uh, section of our presentation. Okay, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, I have it. In, yeah. Okay, so this is the open forum, and uh, in which uh, we will have uh, and, uh, some of the us from Aspen will show you uh, myself and other people will show you what we have done recently, what we are having uh, in plan, and uh, we welcome uh, your input in uh, all of that. And the way we uh, do is, is this. OK, so I hope you will see this screen here. So you uh, probably your screen will more or less the same. OK, uh, and we want you to just open the meeting chat if you want to uh, have questions. Just enter it here. And if you want to speak up, then also say something here. Then uh, when I call your name, you unmute your microphone and uh, go ahead and speak, OK? Uh, that's uh, because we have uh, uh, quite a few people here. Uh, so I guess now that's what that's the best way to uh, do it is uh, to just uh, first, uh, if you enter questions uh, by text, I will be able to see it and uh, uh, answer it. Or other people in As at Aspen can do that as well. Uh, if you want to use your microphone, also say that say so in this text. I want to uh, ask questions, and then uh, uh, when I call your name, go ahead and un uh, unmute your microphone and uh, do that. Okay. Okay. So. Um, What's new recently uh, is we in uh, uh, February, uh, right uh, before this whole crazy thing uh, started. <laughs> uh, 
we uh, sent out uh, the version one line of 14.8 and also we uh, we almost got it done but we couldn't uh, shift the uh, relay database and line constant uh, the, the line database at the same time so but it's uh, the other two are coming uh, as well okay so there's some uh, noteworthy enhancements in 14.8 uh, uh, first of all you Please uh, do not uh, share your screen until uh, if until you absolutely need to. Okay, so again, uh, just type a message to the uh, chat uh, that uh, with your question, or if you would say you want to answer, uh, uh, use a microphone, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, say so. Uh, I will call your name. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's a, few, a couple of uh, a few items on the screen uh, that uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, this is noteworthy in uh, 14.8, apart from all the bug fixes. And uh, the uh, one item I want to highlight is the third one from the left. Uh, I think I mentioned the second one. And the first one there is also quite important too, but I think you can play with that. Uh, the four locator has been enhanced, and uh, we have uh, and, uh, Su Zhang from uh, Aspen, uh, who will show you uh, quickly on, on that topic. Uh, Su, uh, you're on. Okay, I'm ready. Now go ahead and share your screen and uh, I'll do it. Oh, hi, uh, my name is Su. Uh, in this session, I will introduce you how to use a photo locator in our latest uh, one-line program. So first, uh, what is photo locator? Uh, we utilize recorded photo event file from the relay to find the photo location in one-line program. And uh, how, how we use photo locator in one-line program? Uh, here we have two scenarios. First, we only have one event file. Second, we have two event files from two different relays and the photo location is in between of the two relay. And I prepared two sample cases uh, to demonstrate uh, these two events. In this case, I will introduce you how to run photo locator with a single event file. First, you need to, to click the relay group where the uh, event file has been recorded, then right click your mouse and uh, select the photo locator. Or you can go to faults and for the locator. Currently, we support the five different event file types. Uh, EVE and CEV are from uh, SEL. CFG is a contract file. PQD is in PQDIF format. Uh, TXT is the Aspen defined format. Uh, we select a sample CEV as input file. This is a dialog box for a single event file. Uh, the, the directory to the event file is displayed here. Then we have the joins of the three-phase voltage and three-phase current. We can display waveform, phase magnitude, and apparent impedance. Most of the time, we will use phase magnitude, which is extracted from the waveform with Fourier transform. At the bottom of joins, uh, you will see the three-phase voltage values and three-phase current values. And these values will be uh, updated uh, accordingly uh, when we move the uh, screw bar along the curve. And this value displayed here uh, uh, on the secondary side of the transformer. So we can define the PT ratio and the CT ratio here. And also we can define the time frame that we want to use for Fourier transform. It can be either uh, one cycle or one fourth of the cycle. The fourth type is uh, defined here, and it is also ad uh, updated automatically when we move the scroll bar around the curve. If the event file is recorded 
when a remote line N is open, uh, we need to check this checkbox. And also we need to define uh, the start location of this fault function. And uh, we need to define the maximum fault resistance that can be applied to the uh, fault locator function. Currently, we support uh, seven uh, algorithms. Uh, the first one, auto, is defined by Aspen. All the other six are IEEE published algorithms. Basically, these algorithms will take the recorded three-phase voltage value and three-phase current value as input and generate a percentage value, uh, which indicates the fault locations on the transmission line. And we take this number as a, a reference number. Uh, let's call it a value A. Then what we do is uh, we simulate the faults uh, along the transmission line. Uh, for each fault simulation, we get a, we take the simulated three-phase voltage value and three-phase current value at the relay group as input of these algorithms. Then we generate another percentage value, which uh, we call the value B. So the fault location is found when the minimum difference between value A and value B is found. Also, when we simulate the fault, uh, we also uh, adjust the fault resistance to make the difference getting, minim getting uh, minimum. Uh, for this one, we check all the algorithms. And then we click OK to run the fault locator function. Uh, this message tells us the modified Tagaki algorithm cannot be used in three-line to ground fault and line-to-line -line fault. Since our fault type is line-to-line, -line, we need to uncheck this checkbox. And then we uh, click OK again. And it, it says Takaki, Nova Cell, and Ericsson algorithms require pre-fault voltage and current. So we need to enable the pre-fault voltage and current and select the data point during the pre-fault period. And then we click OK. Uh, this is a photo location report. Uh, it has three sections. The first section is for the case summary. The second one is for the recorded three-phase voltage value and the current value at the relay group for the fault period and a pre-fault period. And the third section is all the possible fault locations calculated uh, in online program. And uh, you can see we have five possible fault lo locations. And uh, let's take the first row, for example. So the first photo location is at 86.633 percentage of the transmission line starts from bus 625 to bus 662. And uh, the simulated uh, three-phase voltage at the relay group is here. And, the, and this is the three-phase current. The total, the total impedance uh, starts from be, uh, between photo location and the relay group is 16 ohms, and the total distance is uh, 16 miles. The fault type is uh, uh, C2A, and the fault resistance has been applied is zero. And uh, this re result is given by Erickson algorithm. A means uh, applied, uh, N slash A means not applied. And also, the TTY window will also give the uh, summary of all the possible photo locations, which is the same as we see in the photo uh, solution, a uh, photo location report. Uh, this is uh, for the single event file. Now I'll show you another one for two event files. So for two event files, first you need to uh, select uh, the relay group at the local end. Then press and hold the shift key on your keyboard and then select uh, the relay group at the remote end. Uh, right click your mouse. Now you can release your shift key and then select the photo locator. You need to select the, photo, the event file 
for the local end first, then for the remote end. So this is a dialog, dialog box uh, for the two event files. And we need to uh, pick up a data point uh, during the fault for both local end and the, re the remote end. Uh, this dialog box is pretty much similar to the one for the single event file, except the last one. We only have two algorithms. Uh, IEEE two-ended algorithm uh, is also published in IEEE papers. And the negative sequence count ratio uh, is, uh, for this algorithm, what we do is uh, uh, we uh, take the negative, uh, recorded uh, negative sequence current magnitude from the local end at the relay group and take the same value uh, from the remote end. Then we get a, a ratio uh, between this, uh, of these two values. We call it a ratio uh, A. Then we simulate the faults uh, along the line. And uh, for each fault, location, uh, fault simulation, we, uh, we get the simulated uh, negative sequence current magnitude at the local end and the other one for, from the remote end. Then we get another ratio value, we call it value B. So the photo location is found uh, when the minimum difference between ratio A and the ratio B uh, is found. Uh, yeah, this is a report for the two event files. Still, it's, the format is similar to the uh, previous one. And the first section is for the case summary. The second part is for the uh, recorded three-phase voltage value and the current value at the relay group of the local end and the remote end. And uh, we have two uh, calculated uh, photo locations. And uh, the results are pretty much similar. Uh, basically, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm done. Okay, uh, thank you, Sue. And uh, uh, let me uh, continue with the uh, uh, PowerPoint slide here. Uh, so for full details of the 14.8, go ahead and uh, tell that uh, uh, you can uh, see a, uh, uh, this uh, PDF file on the Aspen website. Uh, okay, and uh, again, uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, go ahead and put it in the meeting chat. Uh, you know, say uh, if you want to speak uh, to say it with your uh, microphone, uh, say so, and I'll call your name. Okay, okay so let's see. Uh, so what's the, uh, I think uh, on Slido and also right now, uh, Sam uh, had asked uh, uh, that uh, what we uh, have in plan for the next uh, upcoming thing. Um, so the, uh, I start from the bottom. Uh, we are working very hard to uh, uh, get the uh, next major Aspen version out uh, by the end of this year. Um, okay, uh, and uh, here I have uh, summarized uh, planet enhancements that uh, we have in plan. Uh, unfortunately, I looking at this list, uh, I think we may have to uh, drop some before we can, if we want to get something to you by fourth quarter. Okay, so, but again, I want to, you to uh, take a close uh, look at uh, uh, this list. Uh, if any uh, thing you don't understand what is, uh, I mean there, I just type the chat questions. I will explain that. Uh, in detail, but otherwise I will um, uh, uh, pick a few items here to uh, uh, talk about. Uh, for example, uh, um, the model for type, uh, the, uh, uh, the model for uh, wind type uh, three and type four will be there. Uh, I think Sherman has presented on the Tuesday and the model, you'll see that and it will be there. Uh, the uh, 
a multi-level, uh, this uh, uh, the definite time uh, over current elements model, it will be there. Uh, with, so right now you have only uh, in the liner uh, uh, over current relay, um, that you have only instantaneous um, trip, but then now you can also have uh, one or up to five level of, uh, of that um, uh, uh, definite time uh, tripping, okay? Now, uh, we also are going to uh, the second column. Uh, uh, we plan to uh, um, see if we can uh, we can uh, let you add the longer bus name in uh, alongside with the uh, old one, which is at, uh, limited to twelve characters. And there will be we plan to have an extra one uh, that uh, kind of uh, uh, live in parallel. Uh, and uh, Go so further down that list, uh, there will be a built-in uh, defer tool that you can uh, just uh, run to see what uh, the case, one line the case you are using, uh, what is uh, how it is different from any other case. Right now, if you want to see that, you have to run a separate tool and the report for that. The tool is called Case Comparison Program, and it will produce a report. Uh, it's uh, Kind of uh, long and uh, uh, difficult to look at. Uh, now, these all of those we plan to just build this as an one-liner command. Uh, you, for example, uh, you can uh, just have a case and you say what's uh, is it the same as the other case? Just open the other case and tell you, and uh, you can see which exactly what's uh, different. And uh, in relation uh, related with that, all the difference. Between any two cases can be now uh, will be uh, safe uh, in a so-called XML-based uh, data uh, file, and which can be used for uh, will be used for uh, data exchange between one-liner in all other uh, application. Uh, the XML-based uh, 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 data format uh, is designed in such a way that you can uh, update uh, data at the field level. That's uh, as opposed to what uh, uh, what you have now with one-liner case comparison program, you compare two record levels. So if you align is different from in one file uh, compared to the other, when you do the um, update, the entire line is updated. Okay, with this new file format in XML base, you should be able to update individually line length or line impedance or other thing. And uh, going further down that middle. Uh, list. Uh, we uh, will uh, make the uh, one-liner version 15 uh, a built-in EDB client. What does this EDB mean? That's Enterprise Database, which module, which uh, I have uh, some uh, uh, detail about that in the next slide. Okay, so if you run one-liner version 15, it has a built-in client for the EDB, and you can work with the uh, enterprise database for us. Uh, it's come built in. Uh, and a few other items uh, further down, uh, I think uh, Sinyan uh, mentioned that earlier. Uh, the SCA stands for uh, Step Event Analysis uh, with contingencies. Uh, that uh, contingency now, also, if you look further to the left, to bottom of the uh, first column, uh, there's also an item called contingency management. Uh, so we all know that to do uh, relay coordination, uh, a lot, uh, you have to take in, into account a lot of uh, uh, unusual cases. So um, right now you can turn on and offline. You can do some kind of mass uh, contingency, one line at a time, two line at a time. But uh, uh, if you want a finer level than that, or if you want to reapply the kind of contingency that you used before, or you want to take additional kind of contingency, for example, pilot scheme out of service or generator out of service and so on, it's not, there's no easy way to do that repeatedly, uh, except for just select all of them again. Okay, so that's uh, in between those two items, hopefully they will be make uh, uh, those uh, study uh, much easier to, uh, or if move, moving further to the right, uh, there's some other item there, and I want to uh, highlight the second and the third. Uh, 
Uh, we, uh, we are doing some work on the overcurrent curve windows to let you graphically uh, show additional information, for example, the tolerance band of the curve, uh, uh, the uh, um, curve separation, and so on. And lastly, which uh, we put a lot of hope in here, is uh, with the collaboration of our developers, uh, we'll have a, a large and useful uh, OLX API uh, application library that we can uh, uh, ship or make it open source for you to use. Uh, and and uh, that's, uh, that's our hope. And that's why uh, if you have a, a good uh, application in mind that you want to develop and that you want to share, uh, this is, please uh, get in touch with us. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see, uh, let's go through some, before I go to the next item, uh, let's go to, any questions? The time frame of uh, uh, Sam asked for the time frame. I already showed that. Uh, John asked uh, which fall, fall point is the fall location calculated. Uh, it's uh, just look for where the fall uh, had happened based on the event that had been recorded. Okay? So if you fit the event, uh, it, it will play uh, the fall uh, simulation until it finds the best match. So uh, the question on Slido, uh, what is meant with a uh, layer graphic? Uh, layer graphic means that you, uh, you can uh, have a different, uh, you made a custom uh, selection of what you want to show and what not want to show on the uh, diagram. And with a single selection, you can turn them on and off. Okay. Uh, let's see what, uh, anything else. Uh, Okay, so those are the questions I see here. Again, if you want to ask questions, enter the uh, meeting chat uh, as on Slido. Okay, so I, let me go further. Uh, um, I mentioned the, that we are uh, also working on this a new module uh, it's called Aspen Enterprise module. And, uh, and this feature will describe what uh, it meant and what is supposed, how it's supposed to use. Uh, what you have on the picture on the right-hand side is a database that you will need to set up at your uh, uh, company. Uh, and this database uh, will be connected to from Aspen Online version 15. I mentioned that the client is built in. You can also have other uh, OLX API apps that, call, uh, that, that uh, talk to it. And you can uh, also, the uh, database connection is open. So uh, other enterprise uh, uh, application can also get the data. And what is inside that database. This is everything online of cases. And uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, online of cases, uh, the relays data, the report, the data table, everything inside. So you, if you have an uh, authorization to access the database through one of the clients, you can have access uh, and then you can share that uh, quickly. Uh, so this is opposed to uh, sending back and forth uh, millions of OLR file with the very long file names uh, that describe what's in there and you forgot and so on. Okay, So that centralized platform uh, with built-in integration for Aspen application online of 15, uh, relay database and so on. And it's also used as a gateway. And this will be shipped as an add-on module to Aspen online. Okay. Um, this is the, uh, uh, I think I have got a few more minutes uh, uh, for this, unless you have other questions. Okay, so I show you a picture of uh, how the, uh, with the EDB, you can uh, do the uh, uh, online case management. Uh, there are two uh, set of operation uh, that you can do from the EDB, which is from the database side, you, uh, which is show on the upper uh, right corner. Uh, you have a browser of all the cases that uh, you built. Uh, you can have uh, graphic uh, and, and also, um, uh, and it show what cases you have, how they evolve, who made the, uh, who made them change, and uh, the last change, and also which one is related to which one. So uh, in the lower right corner, uh, it show that a, uh, from the BES case. Uh, someone derived a BS working case, and after he have updated there, he brought back all the changes to the base one. Okay, so and also uh, uh, once if other people have the access to the BS case, they will 
and uh, get a notification that the BES case now has been updated and so on. And the browser also show what has been changed, who made the change, and also it, it does not show here, but when you, uh, the external um, and uh, user uh, want to update it, uh, he has to have the correct privileges. And if not, he can also we'll set up the, the last item or bullet point there, it's called approval. He can um, send in the uh, update, but then, uh, the supervisor or whoever has the correct uh, privileges should uh, uh, should be able to approve that, okay? And I think that I have uh, uh, one last one I want to show about the uh, enterprise feature is the uh, so-called case builder feature. Uh, uh, this also related to the fact that now all the differences between uh, Aspen uh, uh, cases can be uh, stored in XML file that now, uh, in at the detail field level. Uh, in the EDB, uh, you can, all, in addition to the cases, you can also store those differences uh, as, uh, as projects or configurations. So project is nothing but uh, a case before and after. So uh, if you show a before case, if you show after case, you can save it as the project. So everything that had been added between the two can be now applied to other cases as well. So that you, and then also you have, you can sequence those projects, who, which one goes in first, which one's going next and whether, and if you can also chain those uh, addition, instead of two generator addition, you have now three, all of this can be made to the uh, project file and then you can apply them in sequence in the so-called case builder. So you, uh, for the case builder, you would select the base, you select one or multiple projects in the sequence and then you say apply, and the program will try to apply that. And if the, on this uh, sequence apply, app application, if one step is overwriting uh, the previous step, uh, uh, you will get a notification and now you will have to decide uh, how this is going to proceed. And uh, after that, you will get the final case. Okay. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, very few, uh, very quick, uh, uh, a description of what uh, uh, what we are working on. Uh, I think we uh, have uh, reached the end of the schedule time. Uh, we don't have to leave. If you, uh, I think, uh, if you have question or you want to contribute something, go ahead and uh, do it. I, I, we can stay online uh, and if you want. But uh, let's see. Is uh, Wang uh, John Wang have another question? Okay, uh, John is asking again that uh, uh, in the four location, uh, phasor quantity changes. Yeah, you saw when Sue did the demonstration, he moved the cursor along to pick the, the spot where the phaser will need to be applied for the four location. Okay, so uh, I think after a little bit of practice and trial with a few forms, uh, you will know which part of the form is the best one that, uh, that need to uh, that, that need to be picked. Or you can just run once, uh, run twice, and if uh, one time it goes way off to somewhere else, then you know that you picked the wrong spot. And uh, sometimes, uh, well, this is the, sometimes more an art than a science. And uh, talking about the four location, I wanted to add one more item is, uh, uh, this is, an, uh, you can call it through an API as well. Uh, I guess uh, that will, if you want to automate it. I think, uh, um, Quanta is already uh, started on that direction, uh, obviously. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a question on Slido, is the EDB a free add-in? Unfortunately, no, this is going to be an extra licensee for that. And if you want to get the detail, just uh, write to support. Uh, let's, uh, okay, and uh, that's uh, all of my slide. Now, uh, let's take, uh, Let's keep uh, five more minutes and see if we have those questions. Uh, if you uh, okay, if you uh, you have something else, feel free to uh, leave. And I thank you for attending. Okay, um, here's the slido. Uh, John is asking what voltage base should be used for mutual couple with line with different voltage level. Uh, uh, Okay, so when you calculate the base uh, impedance, you take the uh, uh, KV divided by uh, 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 
square of the KV, you divide it by the MBA, right? So now, uh, if the two KV level are this not the same, you do you do not do square. You take KV one and the KV two, and uh, uh, that way the per unit calculation uh, will be taken. Uh, so when when the program run the uh, mutual uh, application on one line, it would use the uh, that line KV, and when it performed in the uh, uh, <coughs> apply that to the second uh, branch, it will use the other one. Uh, okay, so uh, it's, uh, can we wait for the top question here is uh, 15 hour answer. Can we get a copy of slide? Uh, yes, we can make a PDF and we'll email you with the uh, uh, with those uh, together with the recording of uh, the YouTube uh, uh, live stream. Uh, you will get it through uh, the email that you registered for this guy, for this uh, event. Uh, if you want, uh, uh, just also just write uh, send a request to support at askmining.com. We may send it to you. Uh, David asks, uh, what's the best way to pursue proficiency in Power Cow and use Python? Um, I think that's the uh, uh, good question. So Power Cow is uh, uh, basically Excel. <laughs> Uh, plus uh, Power Script. Okay, uh, so you know how to use Excel and uh, uh, you know uh, how to apply those uh, Power Script uh, uh, function. I think you will figure out exactly what's going on. And, uh, and then the next best is obviously write to Aspen support. We'll support you all the way. Uh, Okay, so uh, this question: If uh, how how can we get the generator owner the model this year? I think that's. Uh, let's see if Sherman Chan is here. Uh, Sherman, uh, you want to talk something about uh, some uh, a few word about this question? Uh, yes. Uh, the question is: How do you get the uh, the data on type three and type four? Uh, most uh, manufacturers don't want to give away anything. <laughs> so uh, it's, um, it's very difficult. And so uh, I, I suggest that you uh, read the uh, final report of uh, uh, PSRC Working Group C24, which is, uh, really addresses uh, this very question after that we have spent several years going after uh, the manufacturers for this information. And that should be available from PSRC, that's power uh, C24, and the should be available within the next few months. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Sherman. Uh, uh, the next question, uh, to make available comprehensive, I think I already uh, talked about that on Monday, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, uh, there's uh, yeah uh, I think uh, you can see uh, use a, a Python API to do uh, most if not all of what you can do in uh, Aspen onliner menu command. Uh, some would require just a few line of code. Some will probably uh, need you to be a proficient in uh, Python and uh, power programming uh, so on. But uh, you, you will be able to do it. And again, Aspen support will always be there to help. Uh, I think uh, Sam already talked about the database program. Uh, when this feature available, I mentioned the, uh, we are working uh, for the next uh, major version uh, by the uh, for, uh, Q4 of 2020 uh, with the EDB followed quickly after that. Uh, and, uh, Okay, and I guess that's uh, okay, uh, and there's an um, is there a way to check the island? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Actually, there's a trick here that I know. <laughs> uh, there, of course, if you use API and you think uh, hard, uh, you should be able to find out. Uh, 
I, I think uh, I'm, I'm confident that uh, and, uh, you will be able to find a way to uh, print out the list. But there's also a command in one liner that uh, already do that for you. Go ahead and do the one liner command. Um, uh, and let me see which one. Uh, this one, my, I think I already closed my one liner. It's a, uh, it should be the uh, the one that's called a check network anomalies, or you can also use another command called set generator reference angle. When you run those command in the TTY report, uh, it will have a list of all island uh, generator. Okay, and it's uh, it is done with the matrix uh, manipulation. It's very accurate. So uh, just run that and uh, you get the TTY window with a full list of all of those. Okay, so uh, uh, Sebastian is asking a couple of questions uh, about uh, layered graphic. Uh, yeah, so that feature is still it kind of flex. I think uh, Sebastian, if you like, we can get uh, on the phone some point and discuss that exactly what should happen and what should not. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, I guess uh, that's uh, 